Around about a year ago, I was visiting Signal Sounds here in Glasgow when I came across the Airy Touch from Embod Me. This is a highly customizable polyphonic MIDI controller that also supports MPE. Drawn like a moth to the flame from across the crowded room that night, I was initially taken by the flashy LEDs and curious interface. But after having a wee bit of a closer look, I also found myself quite impressed by some of the other features, which I'm going to talk about shortly, obviously. When I first saw the Airy Touch, I genuinely thought that this was one of the more interesting controller concepts that I'd seen in quite a while, and I was so intrigued by it that I harassed Embod me over and over until they agreed to send me one out to feature on the channel. I've had it now for a few months and been experimenting with it in different scenarios, and so the time has finally come to share with you some of my hallowed thoughts about it. The general idea of the Airy Touch is that it provides this pressure sensitive blank canvas on which you can create your own custom controller layouts with the different elements represented by colourful LEDs, thus in theory providing quite a lot of flexibility. The design itself strongly reminds me of the now discontinued and very cool looking Roly light pad, though this device is obviously much larger than those modular blocks and provides far more space to play about with. In some ways, it feels like a much more fully developed and fully realised version of that idea. You can create and select between 16 different layouts from the Airy Touch itself, and each one also has an alt layout, meaning that you can effectively have 32 options to choose from without having to involve a computer and switch projects and all that kind of thing, which is pretty impressive actually. Now before I go into the layouts in any more detail, it's worth probably talking about the build and some of the physical components. The first thing that struck me about the Airy Touch when it arrived and I took it out of the box was just how heavy it was. It's not outrageous by any means, so you're not going to regret carrying it about with you or require three people to lift it or anything like that, but it, the bottom is made of metal and as a result it's got a reassuring heft to it. It has apparently been deliberately designed this way to allow you to mount the controller on a Roland APC-33 clamp, which is kind of like for drum things, I don't know, for people that drum and want to have controllers there, which is a pretty cool idea. I was genuinely surprised about how good it felt, because often bespoke digital MIDI controllers like this can be a wee bit on the light feeling side, perhaps. And I'm very happy to report that this is not the case here. This feels like a dependable, professional grade unit. The touch surface itself is firmer than you might imagine. It's got a kind of net or web feeling to it, with a wee bit of give to provide the tactility that you would want, but it also doesn't feel overly spongy either, which is a good thing. As you might expect, you can adjust the sensitivity, of course, to your taste. And whilst I would always like a wee bit more of that, I think, I didn't experience any notable issues with my presses not being recognised consistently or anything else like that, which could be a problem, obviously, with a touch-sensitive device. Now, in addition to the pressure control, there are also five physical buttons on the left-hand side, well, depending on what way around it is, I guess, which are reassuringly clicky. These allow you to switch between things like scales, octaves, different layouts and all that kind of stuff. The whole thing is powered by a standard DC barrel jack plug, so it does plug into the power, as in into the wall. You, you don't power it over USB, is what I'm trying to say. Now, when it comes to connectivity, there's only a couple of ports on there, but this is where things get really interesting. There is a USB-C port for MIDI data, which, you know, is fairly standard at this point. However, there is also the inclusion of a hardware mini jack MIDI output connection, which is really quite unusual indeed. The reason why this is so interesting is that most modern MIDI controllers, especially the more unique ones like this, where you can customise your layouts on a computer, only seem to ever support MIDI over USB. That means that if you aren't using a laptop, or you want to control other bits of hardware, you need to muck about with USB to DIN, conversion boxes, and all that kind of stuff. Which introduces not just additional cost, but also points of failure that I can do without. As a result of this, when playing live, I will often default to using older MIDI controllers that have got MIDI DIN outputs on them and are also fairly customisable. So for example, the Behringer BCR2000 or the BCF2000, which I've you know, featured in some of my other videos. And that's because I can connect them straight up to my devices and have a few less things to worry about. Whilst this does work, they are not ideal and they're also pretty old at this point, 
my BCF 2000 in particular has started to not work um, as well as it used to. So I've been praying to the synth gods for some time to provide a customizable controller like this. And it appears that sometimes miracles apparently do happen. I really don't think this particular facet of this controller should be understated or underestimated because it is awesome and I wish more manufacturers would do it. Please, please give us hardware MIDI connections. Please. Please. When it comes to the layouts themselves, there are obviously a number built in by default, but you can create your own and edit existing ones using the Eddy Lab software. You can save sets of presets as different projects, which can then be transferred between the touch and your computer. So if you want to have a different project of, you know, 32 layouts for a different scenario, whether it's video art or playing, you know, a particular synth live or whatever else, then you can do that fairly easily. Each individual layout can be built up using different kinds of elements, such as single buttons, more traditional keyboard style blocks, faders, drum pads, and other things like that. I think there's even a dedicated Ableton Live session controller, which I have not tried out because I'm not an Ableton user, and also a sequencer of sorts, which I think is still in beta, but all of these can be resized and arranged to fit, you know, whatever your particular needs are. And, uh, you know, of course, you can also change the colors of the constituent parts as well to suit your own oral preferences, visual preferences visual preferences. Let's pretend I didn't say oral preferences. Different building blocks have got a variety of specific parameters that can be adjusted depending on their nature. So for example, each one can be set to a totally different MIDI channel. They can be configured to send note data or MIDI CC values, respond to MPE, etc, etc. In practice, I personally preferred the button and fader style elements because I feel like they more naturally work with the design of a pressure sensitive device like this. The keyboard portions are cool, don't get me wrong, but it's a very different experience than playing an actual set of keys, obviously. So don't buy this expecting it to replicate a keyboard because it is obviously not a fucking keyboard. One thing to note is that the maximum number of grid elements that you can use on any one individual layout is 48, at least at the time of recording this video anyway. That is a fair number, but I ran into this limitation personally when I was trying to set up a massive bank of individual buttons to switch between particular presets on the Sleepy Circuits Hypno. Ultimately, that's not that big a deal since you can just switch to the alt layout or another layout entirely and get another 48. But it is something to be aware of in case you've got some mad ideas of how you want to use this. Now, any device like this is going to live or die to some extent, at least by the quality of the companion app that comes with it. Because if it's a real chore to create layouts, then that's going to really hamper your enjoyment of the thing. In general, I'm pleased to report that I've found that the software included with the Airy Touch is generally pretty quick, fairly intuitive, and overall, you know, easy to use. There are a couple of weird UX things that I think could be improved upon, such as allowing you to type in the CC values instead of having to select them from a huge drop-down list. But these are minor and can be improved upon fairly easily. I fed all of this back to Embodme, by the way, and they've said that this is something they're working on. So I'm looking forward to some updates there. Now, I am somebody that spends a lot of time playing about with a, a whole range of weird and wonderful bits of gear that would benefit from having a multi-purpose MIDI controller like this to operate them. 
However, finding one that is truly customizable has been a much harder task than it might seem. For that reason, I think that this concept of having, you know, one big pressure sensitive slab that you can mold to your heart's content is kind of genius. Because then you aren't limited to specific types of physical form, you know, particular buttons or anything like that. And it provides a huge amount of versatility as a result. The fact that it also supports real MIDI out over mini jack is just the, the you know, the perfect icing on the cake. Very Touch has genuinely now replaced a number of different controllers that I was using because it is so flexible and, you know, easy to switch between devices. The 32 layouts mean I don't really have to connect it up to computer very often. I've already shown it off with my video synth in another upload and I'm in the process just now of setting it up to operate the different parameters of my Dirty Wave M8 for playing live. And I can't wait to get all that, you know, configured exactly how I want it because not only is it legitimately really useful, but it also looks incredibly cool as well on stage, which is important. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I mean, I can just imagine this thing, you know, being on the USS Enterprise or something like that, you know, data. Aye, it, fuck it, it looks cool, you get the idea. It's priced as a boutique controller, and so as in the ballpark of other similar devices like the Linstrument or the Seaboard, eh, that means it's not inexpensive. However, given what you get, I think it's reasonable. Overall, I think that this is a really excellent bit of gear that has genuinely surpassed my expectations. None of this is an entirely new idea, right? But it could so easily have been executed poorly, and that just isn't the case here at all. Eh, not for me, anyway.